Welcome to Finite Element Methods. Today we'll be covering a very exciting problem, and that's the coupled thermal electrical problem. And today I have Li Fu Wang as a guest uh, that will guide us through the tutorial on how to execute that in the real world. But before we dive into the analysis, let's first look at the equations that govern the behavior for electricity. Typically what you have is this integral over the volume where RC here is the internal volumetric current source per unit volume. And here, what you have is a surface integral that bounds the volume integral. And this surface integral is going to be the electrical current density per unit area. And n bull is the outward normal to the surface S. And then also in addition to that, we know Ohm's law. Ohm's law relates the electrical current density to the electrical conductivity, uh, conductivity of the material times the electrical field intensity. Now note that if I have a very low electric conduct conductance, then you may not have the ability to conduce electricity as efficiently. And so this term accounts for that. The dot product of these two matrices provides me with the electrical current density. Now what I have here is E expressed in terms of electric potential. The electrical potential can be related to the electrical field intensity through this equation. And now the question becomes, how do I know how much heat is really getting generated? We can determine that through Joule's law. So the rate of electrical energy dissipated uh, by current flowing through a conductor is essentially J, which is the electrical current density, times E, which is the electrical field intensity. If I know this information, I can calculate the rate of electrical energy dissipated. That energy can be transformed to heat 100%, 70%. How efficient that, that electricity turns into heat is going to uh, depend on this Joule's law and what coefficient I use in the front. If I assume that is 100% of this energy going into thermal energy, then so be it. If it's 50%, then so be it. So generally speaking then, that's what couples this problem with the heat transfer equations. In the heat transfer equations, you have this formulation. R is a heat supplied internally into the body per unit volume. Q is a heat flux per unit area of body flowing into the body. And then you have U dot, which is the derivative of U respect to T. And that's the material time rate of the internal energy. And rho is the density of the material. And as part of that, you have to use Fourier's law because that allows you to understand how the heat conducts through the material. And so that's also going to be this equation here. The heat flux is going to be equal to the conductivity of the material times the partial theta respect to x. And that's discussed in the book quite extensively in chapter one. But in, in general terms, these equations are coupled with these equations through basically the amount of energy getting transferred to thermal energy. You also have that the electrical conductivity sometimes can vary relative to theta, the temperature. Uh, these two equations combined can allow us to solve a real application such as this one. So let's study what this problem is about. And it's a hypothetical problem, but it's not very different from what you may encounter in real life. Here, what you have is a heat sink, right? And the heat sink is shown here in 3D. And what we have here is wires, in this case, there is zinc that can conduct electricity. And the idea here is that the heat sink is placed here to be able to remove the heat and not get the zinc too hot. In addition to that, you also have a fan that blows in this direction so that the convection, um, the heat can be lost through convection to the outside air. And so in a microprocessor, this is a very typical application. And what we want to do is limit the amount of uh, heat into this material so they don't melt due to operation. In, in general terms, you typically analyze a situation like that in steady state to understand the highest heating that you could get here. 
Now, if the zinc was bonded to the aluminum, as an example, we don't want those bonds to break apart. And so that's another thing you want to consider in this analysis is understanding the CT, the coefficient of thermal expansion mismatch across this interface could cause a crack of that bond. We want to make sure that these systems can operate um, due to cyclic loading conditions. With all that said, why we don't go and turn it to LIFO one which will guide us through the Abacus tutorial and how this analysis can be further conducted. Thank you, Professor Goyal, and welcome everyone to another final element method tutorial. And the topic today is about coupled thermal electrical problems. So here's the problem statement. Assuming that we have uh, eight warns made of zincs that generating keep generating heat because of the Joule's heat <clears throat> and is attached to a aluminum fin and which has the dimensions in this in these pictures. The ambient ambient temperature is 295. Kelvin. <clears throat> and in this problem, we are going to have two steps. Uh, for the first step, we are going to apply the current uh, with uh, 50 amps per millimeter square. And then uh, after the temperature reaches a uh, steady state, we are going to apply the uh, we are going to cut off the current and let the entire structure cool down by itself. So it becomes a purely pure uh, heat transfer problem. And also we are going to compare that with two different cases. One is with the cooling fan blowing fresh air from one direction. So the convection <clears throat> convection factor is larger, is 80 E minus six. While for the other case, we don't have the cooling fan. So the convection factor is a little bit is smaller, which is five E minus six. So first of all, let's, uh, you need to set the working directory to the directory you want and, and then now we create a part. To create a part, call it fan. Sorry, uh, fan. And 3D deformable solid. And we're going to simulate only half of the fan. So at this symmetric boundary, uh, because there's no temperature difference, or temperature gradients. So the heat flux is zero. So you can say this is ins insulated. And so the geometry is around 16. So double 16 is 32. We can enter 40 here. I already include some of the important coordinates here so that we can so that we can follow this these coordinates so zero 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 eight point five two eight point five four 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 eight. Uh, <clears throat> so we end here, sorry. If you make something wrong, then you can click this button to undo the last step. So we're going to use the patterning tools here. Choose the four 
line we just created. And then we don't need a vertical patterning. For horizontal patterning, we need to re repeat that for three times and the spacing is two. Now we start from this point and uh, starting 2.5. 13, 10, 14, 10, 14, 5, 15, 5, 15, 10, 16, 10, 16, 16, 5, 16, 5. 16.5 5 16.50 then connect with the zero here and the depth for that is 20 millimeter this is the thing now we create a And we first draw one of the semicircles. We assume the spacing between cables is two millimeters. So there will be an extra 1.5 millimeters from the end of the cable to the left end of the fin. So let's write down the important points here, 1.50 and then 2.50 is the center of the semicircle and 3.50. So use this arc tool, choose the center first and the two end and then connect them together. This semicircle is the one we want. Now use patterning tool, select the semicircle we just created. We don't need vertical one. Horizontally, we need four of that with the spacing of diameter plus the spacing two, so it's four. And again, 20 for length. Now we create a property. Aluminum first, density we have 2.7 E minus six. All of these units are uh, in millimeter. And thermal conductivity, we have 0.17. Specific heat, we have 950. Another one is the zinc density is uh, 7.14 E minus 6. Thermal conductivity uh, 0.12. Specific heat uh, 390. Electro conductivity uh, 16.75 E3. And then we need another draw heat fraction, which means all the, how much percentage of the electrical energy converted into thermal energy. We do one here. So all electrical energy is converted to thermal energy. Now we create section, aluminum. Solid homogeneous, choose aluminum. Zinc, solid homogeneous, choose zinc. Now we assign them section. Choose your thing first and assign aluminum to it. And then select 
uh, cables here and assign zinc to it. And turn on all the toolbars if you don't have these toolbars I used. It's under view toolbars and then select all of them. Now um, we create a section. So independent, choose cable and fin. It should look like this. Now uh, we create another two of them to compare, to have a comparison between them. So under your section, uh, sorry, under your assembly, you should have four instance, cable one, thing one, cable two, thing two. <clears throat> Select this two and choose height first. So the one that left is the cable two and thing two. So use this translation tools. So we move it to the right of the thing and start with zero, zero, end with, uh, we move it 20 units from here. So let's do 20, zero. So you move to the right of the model one, choose okay here. And now we can show the model one. So the left hand one, we are going to use it for the uh, for the cooling fan with a cooling fan and the right hand side we're going to use it for without a cooling fan now in the step we create two step first one is draw heat and this one should be a coupled electrical and thermal so choose coupled thermal electrical and transient here let's give it a temperature of uh, sorry let's give it a period of time of 150. Initially, let's put ten, one here and a hundred, maximum a hundred step. Um, and here, the maximum allowable temperature per step because in transient problem, it's going to simulate the step with a certain increment of time. So this number controls the maximum allowable temperature per increment. So let's do 40 here, just make it large. And for the second step, there's it is just a purely heat transfer. It doesn't include any electrical problems. So again, let's do give them one, 150 seconds for cooldown and then initially one maximum 40. Now we assign interaction. In the interaction, we can assign the convection and the coupled, uh, the constraint between the cable and the thing. So first we assign convection. To do that, uh, in your view, choose parallel first, and then click the X, Y here, and select all of the cables, and let's hide it first. So create convection with fan, and choose the it should be in the dual heat and propagate to the uh, heat transfer step. So in the dual heat, uh, we choose the surface film condition and select the left hand side because this is with the fan. And but the convection doesn't happen at the bottom, holding control and select the bottom. Uh, deselect the bottom and the uh, symmetric one. This two surface is insulated. It doesn't have any convection applied to that. And the film, con film constant convection coefficient is A, uh, E minus six. And then 
the sink temperature is 295. Now we create another one. Convection without fan. Same thing, draw heat surface film condition and select the entire body, but hold control and deselect this two surface. And this one should be without the cooling fan. So it's, it's five minus six and 295 for the ambient temperature. Make sure that it's created at dual heat step and then propagate to the heat transfer step. Now we can create a bond tight constraint. So the tight constraint, um, let's invert the thing first. So let's do constraint one. We're going to tie the surface of this four to let's do invert again to surface of this one. Uh, we don't need to choose these things. And so the, so the cable is tied to the thing. So this tight basically means whatever temperature you have for the surface on the table, cable will be the same as the corresponding point on the thing. So similarly, we create a constraint to type, select the surface of all the all four cables, and then choose the surface of bottom of the thing. And we don't need this two. Now we can show all of that. After finishing the constraint, Interaction, let's go to the load module. So we create a load for it. This load should be applied at dual heat. It should be a surface current. Choose electrical magnetic here and dual current. Call it a loaded current. And let's load it from the bottom so the current is falling uh, the positive Z direction. Choose all four of the, the surface to apply the load. And the load is 50 M per millimeter square. And then we need a boundary condition. Although this is not, uh, when you theoretically calculating the heat transfer problem, this is not useful, but it's, necessary to obtain uh, electrical potential. So this is more like setting the reference potential. So we can set these four surfaces as zero potential. Sorry, let's go back. It should be assigned at initial and then Select this four one, sorry. This four surfaces as a potential of zero. And then finally, we need to assign the initial body temperature, 293. So initial temp should be in the step of initial others temperature, select all bodies and give it 293. Now in the mesh, we're going to use triangular element for that. So in the control, element control, we choose the tact tetrahedral free here. And now we assign the element type. For the bottom, for the cable, cause it's related to electric. So we choose the thermoelectric 
elements for that. We use quadratic here. So your element uh, number should be uh, D, C3, D, 10, E. And then for the fin, because it doesn't have any electricity, we can use directly use the heat transfer element for that. Also quadratic, D, C3, D, 10. And this is a second order uh, tetrahedral element. Now we can assign the mesh. Since we're using uh, quadratic element, it doesn't necessarily need to be very fine. We can do 0 0.5 here. And then we mesh it. It's still it may still take some time because they still have a lot of elements. You can even make it closer. If your running speed is still slow, you can make it even one because we are using tetrahedral element. And I let let me just stay 0 0.5 here. So Finally, let's go to the job and create a job. And then we can run it. And I'm not going to run it here. It takes some time. It's going to take like 20 minutes probably. So uh, basically in your monitor, you, you will see uh, let me let me submit it and I will explain a little bit. So let me rename it first. Wow. So it will take some time. Uh, but basically uh, you will have this monitor here seeing whether it is doing correct things or not. And you probably will see some warnings and I'll explain that to you. It's still checking the input file. So the first one indicates that we didn't uh, we didn't input the uh, specify the absolute zero, but we're using Kelvin, so it's fine. And then uh, second two step, uh, this two warning is not very, uh, very uh, useful. And this one basically is when we assign the contact, the tight constraint, the one on the cable, the area on the cable is smaller than the area for the bottom of the fin. That means some of the node for the bottom of the fin is not tied to the, to the cable. But Abacus will do some adjustment to it, so you don't need to worry too much about it. And the last one, there are two unconnect regions. These two body are uh, independent. So we are going to see both of them uh, later. We are going to check the result for both of them later. And then when it start running, uh, you will see that this total time means uh, which seconds are you in now. So remember that we set the step to be 150 seconds for the first step. Uh, sorry, we set the step time to be 150 seconds for the first step and another 150 seconds for the second step. And this increment is telling you that from the previous step to the new step was the time increment. So now it has a one, that means one seconds in increment from the initial state to the first step. And now the time is one here. And it will keep running until 150 of the total time. 
that means it finished the, the first step. And then until 300 for the second step, it means it finished all the steps. And this time of increment should be increasing until it reaches a maximum number. The reason is the solution for the transient problem is tending to a steady state. And because the change is not that significant anymore, so the time will automatic increment time will automatically increase. And I will queue it here, but it it will take some time. If it is very slow to you, you can make the mesh larger. Uh, sorry, make the mesh coarser, and it should works better. And if you finish the result, it should look like this. Go to X, Y. So here in this one, frame selector, you can select which frame are you looking at. So we start from the original frame, which the entire body has an initial temperature. Oh, here, choose NT1. One is the nodal temperature. And initial temperature for every for both model is 293 degrees. And for the first frame, we can check the step time here and the increment time here. And when I keep increasing, since the left hand side has a higher con convection coefficient, and right hand side doesn't have that high convection coefficient. So this temp the temperature of the right hand side will increase significantly and finally become red and blue. If you want to check independently, how do they look like? You can at the top select the instant and we hide the left hand side. And you will see the temperature distribution only for the left, left hand side. And from you can hear, see now we are still in drew heat uh, step and all the way to around here, step time 129 and to 150 is the end of your drew heat. So this is the final steady state uh, temperature for your, for your uh, with the thing, uh, with the fans. Uh, cases. And then after that is the natural cooling part. You can see the temperature is dropping. The, that means the maximum temperature for with the fans is around 396, uh, 396 uh, Kelvin. And then in the cooling process, at the end of the cooling process, the temperature went down to 297 with very small variation. Although it seems like some variation, but the variation is pretty small. And then 297 is pretty close to the original temperature, 293, or the ambient temperature, 295. So this is considered already cooled. cooled. But on the other hand, this is without the fan. So the convection coefficient is way smaller. So the maximum at 150, you see the temperature is way larger than previously. Here is around almost 700 Kelvin. And also with the same time of cooling, it doesn't reach the ambient temperature. That means 150 seconds still is not enough to fully cool uh, for this one to cool down. Now let's see how do we output a thermal, uh, output a temperature graph respect to time. So here in the tools, XY data, create XY data and choose it from the field output. And here, uh, we choose the unique nodal, nodal solution. And we choose the temperature, nodal temperature here, because we are only interested in temperature. And in the element nodes, 
choose the first method peak from view point and use this added selection and we select uh, let's see we output this node so it's a node in the inside the zinc and we'll see the temperature distribution for this one along with the time so we can say plot now you can see the temperature changes which respect to time from zero to 150 is the heating up stages it gradually reaches a uh, uh, steady state at 150 and then at 150 the electricity was cut on so it's keep cooling down until it reaches almost the ambient temperature and you can save this set of data click OK here then you can see it in your XY data manager if you uh, well or I already saved one of that so it, it's look like that and you can even output that if you double click you can see the uh, actual data left hand side is the time right hand side is the uh, whatever temperatures you have and you uh, this is this is for the for the uh, zinc now let's see another point on the thing how does the temperature change for the thing so xy data again create another xy data and then field output nodal temperature and then we peak uh, for example this point peak uh, peak this point and then plots you see the temperature of that point has similar uh, similar change as the previous point but the only difference is the maximum temperature is different from the previous point so that's it about how do you how do you uh, show the results of the uh, show the control result and how do you get the xy data and uh, if you want to recheck the xy data towards xy data manager and these are the xy data you have let's delete this one first so we can rename it this one call it uh, without uh, uh, with fan uh, uh, zinc or uh, cable. This one call it uh, with fan thing. We can do the same thing for the other part. This one x y data creates from the field output and nodal temperature so at a selection choose this point and done and save it rename call it uh, without fan able Then delete the selection, add another selection, added the selection to be this point. Sorry. Done. Save it. Rename it, call it uh, without fan thing. Now we can plot this four, holding shift, select all of them and then plot. You can see that this is without the thing. This, uh, I think one of that, the name is not changed. But, but anyway, so this is with thing, this is without thing. 
the temperature difference can be 400 sin different. And between the cable and the fin, the temperature difference is not that significant. And this is how you show your results.